Oh, oh okay. Um, okay, hello. Uh, my name is Simon, and uh, I'm Freak9 directory server developer. So today we'll be talking about uh, our tools that we develop, API, and uh, so let's go to the next slide if it will work, or maybe not. For some reason it does not. Okay, now it works. So uh, let me tell you about myself a bit. Um, so. Everything started with a coding and Linux obsession. Then I got my first uh, entry-level IT job in Russia, back in Irkutsk, pretty far from here. Then I moved to Brno, to Czech Republic, as a quality engineer for 389DS position. And then I, uh, like, pretty recently I switched to software engineer 389DS um, work. And about my hobbies, I have some hobbies, and I also uh, dungeon master for uh, role-playing tabletop games. And uh, while preparing this talk, I think it, it's connected somehow, so let me take you to the journey. Um, so you are sitting in a semi-dark room with a woman in a colored clothes across you. And uh, you recognize a fortune teller. How did you end up here? You don't know, your mind is a bit blurry. And the woman with a calm and in a strange accent tells you a story. So, um, I am mostly, why you should listen to me? I mostly work um, on design and uh, overall development of uh, Python library and then CLI and UI. I mostly was contributing to the, all of this design process, but I was not the only one. I was, of course, one of the team and pretty talented uh, folk. So, and uh, so the woman told, told you about the story of a brave folk who set on a journey to bring, to bring a light and interface to the world. Uh, also, why you should be interested in uh, this theme and what I want to share because this library is connected uh, to Freight9 directory server currently only but beside that I want to share our experience how we went through the design process and how we basically traveled through this realm and uh, it, it had some issues and also it had some upsides and downsides and beside that you will see the actual structures that we developed and it may be useful for you for your DS uh, servers, directory servers. And uh, yeah, who knows, maybe you will use our... So, but first let's go into the dark times of the past. Uh, at some point in the past, of course, we just first had our 39 directory server who was just as open all up uh, and uh, it, it required a lot of uh, a lot of knowledge and understanding of underlying processes so while you want to set up everything it, it required a lot of time and the complexity after even more time were increasing and increasing so of course there was some tools that can help with it like Perl and bash scripts uh, and of course some LD files and just direct requests that you sent, it, it was used. Later, uh, 39 Management Console appeared, who was written in Java. But all of these were not tightly connected and still, after the complexity was raising, it was, it, it was not so, it did not feel that it fulfilled the purpose to easy the task. So for example, the picture of uh, Freight 9 Management Console, you see, it's not bad. The design is still pretty good, but while you have this kind of Java tool and while you want to develop some new feature, add some new feature to it, the structure itself may not allow you to do it easily and then new bugs arrive, etc. And also it required the dedicated server with dedicated opened port for this, solely for this purpose. 
And regarding Perl and Bash scripts, it basically like this. What to the recent times, it uh, like when you want to set up something, remove something, there's like separate scripts, so, and all of them were not named in some consistent way. So like as you can see, it's like for backup, it's named like back to DB, or I mean DB to back, and then to restore back to DB. Like to run some fix up for some plugin, it's separate Perl script for the password policies also a lot of stuff and you should know about it and it's everything connected somehow but still you can find out only through the uh, reading administration guide which is not uh, so easy and and uh, new library came uh, or at least started to appear so just let me go straight to this library. So we are here in the Freak 9 Python library milestone. And uh, what we chose? We chose Python for development. And I think it, it is a very good choice for this kind of thing. Because while you need to administrate, while you need to have a flexible possibility to use this code in scripts, use this code in tests, and tests were the main reason we were developing this. So we started to uh, write tests with, with a simple library that I will describe just in the next slide. So for example, I will just go straight to the structure itself. So uh, the initial de development was done by Thierry Bordas my colleague, and uh, the main structure, what we have, we had uh, DVSRV object, which holds the connection, <laughs> which holds aliases to other objects, and uh, these other objects, uh, they were, at that point, task-oriented. So you, for example, have agreement, and or replica object, then you go to it, like, and you call it, like, instance dot, replica dot, and you basically have the list of tasks, the methods in the object is tasks. It's, uh, for example, create replication or mm, no, remove replication, etc., etc., and like initialize the agreement. And it was for everything, for backend, uh, for plugins, etc. But let's go back to this slide, and what you can see here is uh, how it's possible to initialize the connection. So we have this method wrapper. We were using Python LDAP for uh, our main way to connect to the DS. And it's very nice library, which I also very like, and we were contributing to it at some point, and I think still, yes. And uh, so for this wrapper, we have local simple allocate. We ha actually have few methods, but the main that you will probably use when you write some script, it's local simple allocate and remote simple allocate. Uh, if you allocate the instance locally, you can use uh, and run tasks like backup or um, um, create uh, SSL certificates on the instance generate, which will call certain tools. But in the result, like you basically have these simple methods and you can call it directly from the instance object. Then after you allocate it, um, all, of, all of the stuff, there is like ports and uh, URI, uh, set password, etc. Then you open, which initi uh, initialize the connection. And now after connection initialize, you can run some requests. And as I said before, you will run probably some tasks uh, which go through these aliases, like here, for example, config object will, you, you do set and it will just set the port and then you can do restart, for example. And there's also another simple example. We had a uh, few tools, utils uh, in our library, like for example, to generate some um, LDIF, there's my mistake, I recently just import LDIF file path, but it should be the same here. And uh, you basically generate LDIF or do a lot of stuff that you can do uh, with um, 
libraries from our toolset and then you run something like here for example if to be import uh, so um, what what else so as I said the main reason why we were developing lift 9 is tests and we were using pytest for this we also were contributing to pytest but less than to Python of that. And uh, the PyTest is a nice tool for uh, writing some tests, especially, I think, for testing some server because you have fixture and you always need to have some server. So for the inter integration tests, it was pretty obvious choice. You have fixture. Fixture is a function which uh, in the test framework, like understood by the te testing framework, and it runs. And in this uh, function, you have uh, teardown and setup, and it's all located there. And then you just set the scope if it will be run one time by per test function or one time per the whole test model. So you have this. We call it it's topology. We call these functions. And yeah, basically that's it. Uh, sometimes you use another fixtures and other functions to create another setup, like create users or set up password policy, for example, and then tear down any tear down you need. So there is, for example, a list of topologies that I was developing after I just came to the first time as a QE to the 389. Uh, we put it to the lib 89 to the separate model, so you can just, uh, while developing your test, you just import it and that's it. So we have um, standalone, standalone with Kerberos, some uh, few standalones which are not connected, uh, and you can connect them if you want. Uh, one master, I'm not, it's um, one instance with enabled replication but without agreements. And then go some replication topologies like uh, C for uh, consumer and M for supplier or master. So yeah, basically like this. And H H for hub, of course. Uh, a simple example of the test. Um, so what we have is um, like there's few features of PyTest probably. We don't need to go deep into it, but I think it's also pretty readable, as like it's Python, usually it should be pretty readable. You should not overcomplicate it. And like you have this uh, variable search param, which goes here, and then it's divided into attributes, uh, and some different attributes. And while running, it will run basically not only once, but three times with these parameters. And before this, it will create the topology with a one standalone instance, which then you can use in your test. And then it created some test entry also before the defined topology. So it's like overall efficiency, like much, much bigger than just straight way writing tests. For example, we had, of course, it's not everything, not all the tests we had, like we only recently started developing uh, lib 39 and if we had pretty vast amount of tests uh, written in Bash. And it was also one of the reasons why we started to develop Lift 39 because it's a, it was for the, the, for the developers, it was really hell to go through this Bash framework because it, like, if, you, if you have set up like, continuous integration, it's nice, okay, everything works, but still requires a lot of time and can, something can go wrong, a lot can go wrong. But uh, for the developer, for on their machine, you need better solution. For example, I ported simple paged results uh, this suite, and in Bash it was, and, and it's without topologies, etc. It's just the pure test. It's four thousand, and after I ported, it was one thousand. And I was not professional at Python at, at that point or now, but I mean, it can be done much better. And then at some point, another brave uh, folk came to our team and joined the party. And uh, his name is William Brown. He started to work with uh, Red Hat a few years ago, and he made first <coughs> contributions to the project. And one of them was improving Lib39. Then later, me joined also to the development of these deep parts. 
So the uh, so we needed some improvement because uh, while you have so there's example of objects we had like these uh, uh, task oriented objects agreement for example in backend and you see that they share the same tasks like get properties set properties list and in these tasks they have uh, for example here like backend and backend and backend and backend and so it's you always just run these tasks. They do not use the actual object uh, properties and uh, they repeat themselves a lot over the whole framework. It's not only here. So it, we needed some change. We need some well-organized structure. So here's the structure. Let me tell you about this. Uh, we called it the, William called it the yes, LDAP object. And basically, I will say just straight away, it's not a ORM, uh, object uh, relation uh, method, uh, but it's uh, something between this and just straight away approach. Uh, basically, we have two objects, the SLDAP object and the, uh, plur uh, it's a single version, uh, and we have uh, plural, the SLDAP objects. The SLDAP objects represents um, set of entries def defined by <coughs> few uh, parameters like filter, scope, um, must attributes, like like all of the characteristics that you can use for the LDAP entry. And then, uh, but it just contains this, you just define them and it just contains them, it does not contain actual entries. So when you do for example, list operation, it will make an LDAP call, which uses these uh, parameters to make a request, so search request, and uh, it returns the set of entries, which formats in a, a certain structure. And then uh, the SLDAP object represents the single entity, like concrete entity of returned result which then you can, uh, which then has set of methods and properties. And it's not IRM because for this, like I think like not me, not William haven't found solution how you can make out of all dump entries or something like ORM because you still have DN which locates in the tree and uh, then defined also by the scope and filters, and then you have uh, not concrete set of attributes, which you also, which you, when you have, for example, user entry, it can have maybe some SSL information and maybe some I don't know, UID, or sometimes do not have UID, or like maybe some phone, and like it's not always concrete, so you can't define it certainly. So it's not ORM, and. Uh, <coughs> Basically, this structure is um, inherited by other objects, uh, which have which have the, their own additional um, parameters. And basically, yeah, like for the plugin, you have uh, like an SLDD plugin or something like this object class, like set of object classes, set of uh, filter and some certain scope, and of course some certain methods to work with this objects and uh, yeah basically <coughs> uh, you have for example a plugin also then it derives to some certain plugins and etc and uh, account can be user account service account or directory manager account so yeah um, let me give you some example of this um, to usage so you have for example plugin member of uh, then you enable this plugin. Uh, then you create user accounts. First, you define the instance of the object, uh, of the plural. <coughs> uh, you define it by like supplying the instance by connection. It's actually opened connection should be, and then uh, su suffix where it belongs. It also already included RDN of all uh, organizational unit people. So it's like predefined. You can define it additionally here if you want, like, or set it to none. Then you can create user. Like here, I just 
for, ex for an example, show the, that we have create test user method. It just creates the user with some certain set of attributes, so not to bother while testing something. And then for the group, you do something like this, but here just directly you supply the properties which yeah, just attribute value pairs. You can supply the list here, of course, if it's multi-valued attribute. Uh, and then if you need, like here, for example, for the member of, you want to, this user to be member of this group. So you set user.dn, it makes search. While you are calling this method, it makes search. It require, takes dn and yeah, puts it here. So, and then you create, want to create a member on shared config, for example. It's not necessary, but you can. And uh, yeah, you basically have set methods set group up there, and that's it. Then you can test that it works. Once again, get in the group DN and check that user has it and that plugin automatically set it. But uh, at some point, you start to feel some disturbance comes into the room. You feel that uh, something like some noise start appear in your head and you do not understand what's happening, but make perception check for all days. What was it? 19, okay. You're pretty sure understand that something wrong is happening and uh, that this dark energy comes from this woman across you. But only you start to notice it, she switches the theme to uh, next topic and with a louder voice continues the story. So we are here, uh, new structures started to appear in the room and as the world was developing and the uh, next thing we started to develop uh, together with lib 9 is uh, command line tools. And also this DSLDAP object was one of the natural transition, uh, like we started to develop this and one of the reasons was these command line tools because it's much easier now to develop some something on top when you have some well-defined structure for the objects. So what we have there? We have there four tools, and I will uh, tell you now. First of them, DS Create, uh, and all of these four tools are divided by the some certain purpose. Uh, DS Create creates it. You can call Create Template then uh, it, it, has, it will create some template for you with some defaults, you set it, and then you call from file out of this inf file, and it will create an instance. And uh, interactive, it's just you call this, and it will ask you questions, and that's it. DSCTL, uh, uh, it is for controlling the instance and calling some maybe offline tasks so you can restart, start, stop. So it's basically it's the tool which does not require credentials from you. So any action which does not require, they will be here. And um, yep, so basically you can see uh, it's controlling tasks, checking status, remove, uh, checking backups, list and maybe restore something. Uh, it's probably contains only list. Uh, and then you have a uh, few tasks that we are, they basically also written, it's the task written in C, but, and also they have some offline options, which you call with an SLPD. And this is basically wrappers around this in SLPD calls. And then you have uh, DSConf, which can, uh, requires credentials, and it has a lot of options, really a lot. Uh, basically each object uh, which you can imagine you need for controlling the instance, it's there. And for example, for plugins, password policy agreements, replication, uh, tasks, usually tasks located under some, something, but we, we have something else for this. And uh, in plugin, for example, yeah, you have all of the possible plugins you can list, and you have some certain plugins defined here as a separate, Entities, but also you have a list of all of the plugins, and it includes some maybe bitwise or some all of this, like it that can be put even some custom plugins that somebody put there. 
uh, or show which will print the entry. Uh, and then the under, for example, some plugin, you have some methods which you call, like enable, disable, status, show, and set, or some um, certain like config entry, fix up. And for the things like uh, show, set, status, we usually have, of course, encapsulated part of the code which used across all CLI tools. So as much as encapsulation, encapsulation as possible. Do not repeat yourself. And uh, DS IDM, and here you have, uh, for example, it's, it's still under the heavy development, and our main focus anyway is the DS itself, not the IDM solutions. Uh, but for example, we have few tools, and uh, like you can, for example, some account policy, lock, unlock, which does actually a lot. There is a lot of ways to lock or unlock an entry, like a few NS account lock, few the um, cost entries, class of service, and which then defines the scope and you apply the template of NS account lock. So like it's actually a, a pretty complex operation with locking and unlocking and it's allocated here. And then a yeah, group just create group or something, uh, or user. So you can't create an account here because account is dedicated only for this kind of operations, for listing, locking, unlocking, because group is also an account. Uh, but if you want to create actual group or do some operations with attributes, uh, you go to group or to user or to organizational unit. And then initial initialize, I will show you just next slide. Uh, it's uh, for creating creating entries under some backend, uh, some sample entries, but sometimes you just need to create something there. You say which, uh, which uh, suffix it has, and, like, and it will create, I will show you now. I hope it will work. Okay, small scan cast. So it's basically how you create, is the in file, and then in this inf file, you call DS create and from file, what I was telling before. You also can create simple entries in the inf file, but I, for the example, I uh, showed it here. Yeah, it's, it was live, I haven't cut anything. So maybe a few seconds more, yeah. And uh, then I call DS detail to show DS detail tool. <coughs> Slow typer, okay. Uh, then status, it's running. You can have a verbose option, but mostly while checking status, it's enough. And you, of course, can check from the system CTL. And then you have, um, uh, so yeah, basically supply credentials to the dsconf. And uh, as the same as with open all that tools, you can supply, like, not directly put in password, uh, like plain text, but here. And then it shows the some monitor <coughs> server. You see what's happening there. And while having it as a CLI, you can, of course, monitor it. The CLI just calling it over and over with your script. Then, yeah, for example, we create backend. I just showed a few options that we have there. And basically, all, all you need is the suffix and backend name. You can create, as I said, entries and suffix, but uh, for the example, I just created it straight away without anything, clean. And then I call DS ADM to show, um, yeah, so, to show how to initialize uh, this entry. So as you can see, it's, this basically four tools allows you to control like, and set up your instance in a pretty nice way, in my opinion. And yeah, that's in initialized. Okay. <coughs> then, what else? Is it okay? Okay. Um, control five, I guess. Okay. What happened? Okay. And then uh, we are going to the next uh, to the next part. It's web UI, and uh, we use the cockpit, and it's 
Yeah, that's basically what you can see. Uh, Cockpit is a tool, uh, like is a Fedora project, which allows you to see your lib tree, uh, uh, which allows you to see the Linux server uh, and control it through the browser. And you can create additional components. And uh, we've created Frame 9 directory server. First, it was developed in jQuery, but a bit. Then we were refactoring it to React. And it has a lot of, like, just to show a bit my, our development. And this was mainly done by me and Mark Reynolds. So it was our two-man job, mostly. And yeah, it's server setting, security, databases, replication. So it basically has everything what CLI has. And it uses the CLI calls. There's uh, why you see on the main scheme these arrows. Uh, just show a few stuff that can be done on the way, just switching. And yeah, so it's it basically cockpit allows you to call any Linux process, and we call uh, our CLI tools. Okay, I don't see any point to go through all of them. Have you stopped? Okay. Uh, okay, I will just finish like this because it's so. And as you sit in this <laughs> room, you start to feel that these dark forces just come closer and closer to you. Now you see the actual dark things that surrounds you. These things that came from below, and now you understand that they are real. And so are the challenges we went through. Uh, first of all, uh, dealing with the lack of documentation. So these dark forces that you have felt on the way of developing DS, um, uh, DSLDAP object, they were lack of documentation. And uh, William was developing a lot of this. And like while we was joined, we were also developing a lot of this in a pretty kind of short time. A lot of passion were put into it and less of documentation and time for the documentation. And then it required how we solve this challenge. We uh, put a lot of time uh, into developing the communication between our team, like even more, how you transfer this knowledge, etc. It was also pretty good experience. But we were, uh, we were able to, like, it, we may avoid this by putting more time into documentation. And I think it's pretty important for anyone who develops something like this to remember about it. And another thing is the careful investigation design for flexible architecture. And it's, I think, also pretty important. And pretty important to understand that something may change. And you, the requirements may change. And you should be able to uh, change your direction, how you approach. and. Your tools should allow this. If you will have a lot of hard coding stuff there, it will, it will require a lot. So I think it's also pretty important to keep in mind while developing such a, some APIs or something, because you never know how exactly they will be used in the future. But now we are in a bright future, and um, we are here, and uh, while you are surrounded, surrounded by these dark things and they just came closer and closer and you feel that you may lose, though you fight, you hear the noise outside and you understand that it's your folk, your team who came to help you and they brought the community. So it's another point where I'm here. I think the community really matters and it matters not only in the point that we develop something together, but it also matter in the point that the weather between communities should be on a very good and nice level. So we, so we are together sharing some knowledge, sharing our successes, and we, we still kind of feel this community between us. And uh, like we are living like our life, and I think we are applying a lot of time to our job, and it's kind of important to keep the good weather across your work and across the community and the people you communicate with. So it's one of the reasons why I also came, because I wanted to just share what we have 
if somebody can get something out of it, it will be nice because it's also open source, so you can get stuff. And also, I think I don't have time for the demo, or how much do I have? Because... Ah, okay. I, have minutes. I can show a short demo, maybe. And uh, I will just mirror display. <coughs> okay. Will it be? Okay, that's good. So, uh, let me show the short demo. So first, what I wanted to do is, uh, let me update the cockpit, and I will just create two instances. Um, <coughs> So it already comes with a uh, set um, installed security. So the security is enabled. Uh, certificates are created. And I will create sample entries. <coughs> and as you can see, I create master. So I want to set up some simple replication and to show you how simple it is. I hope nothing will go wrong. But I tested. But it not always helps. So, um, okay. next. And also, I will create sample entries just straight away. It validates that passwords uh, are to some degree. So, we uh, it's still under develop, like, it's already ready to use. There's just few small things with validation that can be improved. But overall, I think we're in a pretty good state. I mean, the, all the menus are ready right here. But now, let me switch to the CLI to show what we have. And I will just, I wouldn't, like, it's, of course, it's easy, but uh, it's still the full command that I'm slow typer. But and let me show you. So basically, with the first command, okay, I <coughs> enable replication. With the second command, I create an agreement to the second master. And here, on the second master, I do the same. Yeah. And uh, okay, and now we can go to the replication. It requires up, uh, <coughs> updating. <coughs> and yeah, you can see the agreements here. And now let me initialize it from here. Yes, I'm sure. So it will make an initialization request. We update the menu. And now it's incremental update succeeded. We see that status is OK. Now let's go, to, let's go here and check that so let me first show you the. So it's basically the small script that I wrote to show that it, you can use this uh, library to do some administrative tasks. And just here, the simple example I import libtrade 9 and user accounts. I create users. I, I first, I um, allocate the, the connection. Hmm, instance and then I open the connection and then I create users on one, sleep a bit and then create uh, and check that uh, user exists on the second one. And if everything will be okay, we'll see the message. <coughs> yep, everything works. So, yeah, that's it, I think. Yeah. So if you have any questions, we maybe have some time. Yeah. Uh, can I install this library 3.9 in the stand with 7 or Red Hat 7? Uh, in the CentOS, Red Hat you, I th it's possible that the package is already there. We had this issue recently, like maybe like two weeks ago, you certainly can't. But uh, now we are adding this. So you can install it on the CentOS, if not now, but in following weeks. I could suggest uh, 
the Fedora 29 or Rome and the Red Dead 8, Sand 8. Yep. Uh, uh, most most uh, most companies, current most companies using use uh, the CentOS as and the Red Dead 7. Point yep. Yeah. So uh, this is only for uh, RHEL 8, not for the Sun. So because also Cockpit was developed for the RHEL 8, so and Sun. No, I don't think so. Like maybe you can make some hacks, but then you will require to make some hacks for the Cockpit also. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure exactly how it I will know, turn just, out. Just Ah, uh, 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 only Leap 39? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's there. We tested it on the RHEL 7 for some time. But the CLI and Web UI for new RHEL and ZOS and new Fedoras started from 29, I think. Um, you did uh, a UG Probes uh, test script that you showed. Yep. Um, and I also created a data set uh, record and then you slept one. Yep. Uh, why does sleep one? Uh, just in case if I will have some bad connection or something. Okay. Just, just in case. Usually you don't need this. It's not so slow, of course. But uh, while writing tests, we usually do this when we do not check for the speed of the replication, but we check the actual fact of the replication. So it depends on the purpose. And currently, currently I wanted to show not the speed, but the fact that it's replicated. Uh, I don't know. I, I've been here in the workshop. Yeah, okay. Yeah, you can, of course, yeah. Uh, so it, this script is not ideal way. We actually have the dedicated function in the lib 9 for checking, and it also checks for the uh, CSN, which is uh, basically, it should, they are aligned between uh, masters, so when the replication is in sync. Yeah, yeah. So I yes, understand. so yes, basically when you do it in the proper way, you uh, have the dedicated method in lib 39 or you check yes. Uh, yes, yes. you're right. Yes. Yes, yes. So in lib 39 we have in the replica.py uh, module we have replication manager. So and in, uh, with there it's in this development you have uh, ability to check replication and also it basically we use this to create replication. So you there's methods like create first master and then join master and like join consumer. So it's like higher level function for creating replication. I haven't shown it because like the time is limited, but you while creating replication using lib 9 you do not create the object itself, but you call these higher level functions. Like joining and for testing it, yeah, as you said. It's not the trivial task, and yeah, yeah. the time has it. Okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. The, there's one more. Uh, thanks. Um, just so wonder if there is a way to modify your script to really be working with other directory servers. You mean, yeah, so. Uh, the lib 9 itself is highly, currently it's concentrated on uh, only 389 directory server. But we of course have this thought. Uh, currently our like, how many people work on this is too low, but if there will be more people and maybe from the community, I think it's possible because this DVSRV, if you set the parameters in a more like narrow way, and you can, it, it can be more unique to different well, so it can be unified for different uh, kinds of directory servers, and then each directory server can have some special methods for this. I mean, like uh, for us, we, uh, we deal with replication this way, so we will have additional, like we will inherit, and we will do something additionally. But it will require additional development. So currently it's not possible, but we kind of, at least me, I'm looking forward to develop something like this, which can be used by others. So, um, is it open source? E yes, yes. So, yeah. which kind of well, uh, GPL, so as in Red Hat usually, GPL 3. 
Yeah, uh, very nice. Um, so the, uh, the command line interface um, is like when you're starting up those, um, you're creating those instances. Yep. And I mean, we're, we're talking about, I guess, test scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, is that also applicable to production? Do you have full control of all the switches and configuration parameters? Is it ready for that kind of scenario yet? Or what? Do, what where exactly? Do you? Well, like for example, you know, there might be a thousand switches that 389 supports. Does it? Can you put all those switches? Yes. Yeah, so our CLI supports uh, most of them, if not all. Yeah, so yeah, it, it's developed for production and for our customers and yeah, users. For internal development, but for external customers too. Yeah, yeah, we we are like putting it as a subscription and stuff. So like, yeah, it's production already. Okay. Yep. Uh, I also like the uh, the LF API that was the uh, you know near object relational mapping. Yep, my turn. So uh, yeah. was that? But that was just for a limited set of use cases. You had that object diagram, so you can use it for that set. Of objects, but it's not really for general so purpose. So, DSLDAP uh, object itself is general purpose. You can even call it and uh, call the create method with any attributes which will create any entry. But uh, when you work with some account or with some replica, you don't want to mess things up, and it has it's, uh, it sets you some boundaries as certain object classes, certain scope if sometimes it's applied and uh, so certain filters. So when you call the list, it will show only the uh, entries which are defined by these uh, parameters. But the DSL, DSLDAP object itself doesn't have these limitations and can be applied to any entry. Okay, thank you very much for listening.